eminent members of the panel, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you all a very good afternoon from India. I thank the organizers and especially CNS for giving me this opportunity to speak to you all about my point of views of the care of NCD in modern times, especially COVID times. And um, so when I look back over this last one year, it fills me with a certain sense of frustration, bordering anger, because all of us that have been involved in the management of uh, various diseases, COVID and otherwise, have been so, so much engrossed in our attention for the care of COVID and this pandemic that had hit the mankind, that we had somehow lost track of other diseases that the humanity is suffering from. And unfortunately now, as the year is ending, we are seeing a lot of frustration and anger being built up in the patients of cardiovascular diseases, renal diseases, malignancies, about how they have been unfairly treated during COVID times. So when we look back, so when we look at the pre-COVID times, we realize that it was the non-communicable diseases that were killing more than 80% of people across the world. They were cause of 80% mortality. And what happened during COVID time was that between March and May, that was um, the peak of COVID crisis, all across the Western world, everyone saw that there was an increase in the overall mortality in these Western countries to the tune of 50 to 100 percent. And this was coinciding with the peak of COVID crisis. So it was a natural conclusion that was drawn that you know, COVID probably will emerge as the leading cause of mortality worldwide, and it has potential to wipe off a vast section of humanity. So all our resources, and justifiably so, were focused on COVID care. And for the next eight to nine months or, or one year time, we focused on this specific crisis and have largely contained it uh, as far as the world is concerned over the, some areas are seeking a second peak, but overall the crisis seemed to have been managed pretty effectively. But when we take an overall comparative picture between COVID and non-COVID diseases, we realize that out of 150,000 deaths that happen in the world every single day, one third of them, that is around 50,000, are because of cardiovascular diseases. Around 26,000 are because of malignancies. And another around 17,000 are because of respiratory diseases and diabetes, liver diseases, road traffic accidents, kidney diseases, tuberculosis, HIV AIDS, suicides, all individually contribute to around 2,000 to 4,000 deaths out of these 150,000 deaths per day. And their contribution individually is around two to 4,000 deaths. Now, when we compare it to the COVID mortality, we saw that even during peak of crisis in various countries, uh, and when we compare the global figures in combination, we saw that COVID was killing anywhere between 2,000 to 6,000 patients uh, per, per day uh, as compared to these other diseases. So we realized that, uh, we also realized that as far as the leading cause of mortality was concerned, if we focus our attention on Southeast Asia, uh, coronavirus, the COVID-19, was anywhere between 10th and the 100th most common cause of death, even during corona time. So we have to realize that the hard facts that we have learned is no matter what crisis the world is facing in the healthcare, the mortality caused by cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, malignancies, tuberculosis, HIV AIDS, road traffic accidents, suicides, still remains higher. And whenever we are faced with any other second pandemic or any other crisis, we cannot lose our sight of the care of the patients suffering from these diseases, because if we do so, then we will be causing more harm and more mortality overall as compared to, um, as compared to the normal days, because, because they would be, they, these diseases when left untreated or left unattended would be highly lethal as compared to when they are managed effectively. So <clears throat> I'm a cardiologist based in a city of Lucknow uh, in the northern part of India. And we were a tertiary care hospital, one of the largest hospitals in Asia, draining a large part of North India and even some parts of adjoining country of Nepal. And when COVID crisis hit us, we converted ourselves 
into a largely a COVID hospital, but of course, we were also giving non-COVID care. And we realized from our experience in cardiology that the kind of non-COVID care that we were providing was highly, highly inadequate. We shut down our outpatients for a large part of this year. Everyday outpatients in our cardiology is to the tune of anywhere between 400 to 600 patients. All these patients were left unattended. Very few of them received telecommunication or teleconsultation. Um, but then most part of most of these patients were left unattended and that brought a lot of sense of frustration and anger in the patient, dissatisfaction in the patient, those patients who have been treated previously with, with angioplasties, with pacemakers, did not receive care. And this was the situation with, with the renal diseases, they could not receive dialysis. This was a situation with malignancies, they could not receive the chemotherapies, radiotherapies and trying, so there was a sense of frustration. And I give this cardiology statistics because in the eight months of COVID, we saw the figures that we saw here appear to be large in terms of when we compared to other hospitals in COVID care facilities, but I can assure you that we were seeing and we were treating more than five times patients in non-COVID times. And those, those, four, those, those patients or 80% patients who were not treated, this really had the poorer outcomes and we see those poorer outcomes now. So now as the fire of COVID is setting, down a little bit, I can say with a little bit of caution, we also have to see that overall in the healthcare sector, especially looking at the NCD, our house is completely on fire and we have to utilize all the resources at our disposal. disposal. We have to come to a common consensus uh, with a common wisdom, how to treat and what is the way forward, how to treat the non-communicable diseases, how to prepare for the second pandemic whenever it comes, second crisis whenever it comes, and how can we treat that crisis and simultaneously lose, not lose track of the bigger house on fire that is the non-communicable diseases. I believe the COVID-19 pandemic is the real sense global crisis that had hit the mankind after Second World War with similar kind of strategies so as to believe that every person on this planet either directly has an or indirectly has been affected by the crisis. Similar was the case in Second World War. It poses us similar challenges and at the same point of time, similar opportunities because why I say opportunity is because it has shaken from its complacency, the political class, the bureaucratic class, the, the entrepreneurs, the healthcare system, everybody it has shaken from complacency, we have been forced to think of new innovative ways to survive in the present and a more better and a comfortable way to survive in the future. So this shaking up of complacency, what the Second World War was did, I mean, a lot of, lot of progress of the mankind that happened in the 20th century happened because of the lessons we learned from the Second World War. So the lessons that we learned from COVID-19 pandemic will that has shaken us from complacency will help us plan better in times to come plan more innovatively in times to come, plan a more transitional part of the research in times to come. So there's not all is not lost. There is certainly a way forward. And I believe that meetings like today's meeting will help come at a common consensus, will bring us back to the drawing table and help us renew our plans to tackle diseases, especially non-communicable diseases in times to come. It will require a larger coordination between government agencies, academicians, organizations that have been involved with the healthcare system. We have to come to a consensus where the allocation of resources is not based upon rhetorics and vote banks, but it is based upon um, hard requirements. Both economic resources as well as the human resources have to be allocated according to the severity of the disease and according to the need. We have to plan for both short terms in terms of therapeutic interventions, as well as long term over the next 10 to 20 years, over a term of preventive strategies in healthcare plan. And we have to really free ourselves from the clutches of the industry and economic consideration. And we have to rely on healthcare that is based on the evidence-based medicine in terms of common consensus wisdom with patients and societies in mind rather than individuals, individuals in mind. I thank you for your attention and I wish you best for all your remaining part of the meeting.